Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, after a little productive break, uh, we had the lunch last week of our first uh, series of webinar, which I hope you were able to join. If not, we are currently working on uh, finding a possibility to put the replay on, on, uh, on our website and YouTube channel, channel. So please catch it up if you are interested. But today we are back for our sixth episode of Enrich Your Coffee season three. And it's a great pleasure to have you, Muriel, uh, with us. So Muriel Atane, she's the Secretary General at EARTO, which is the European Association of Research and Technology Organizations. And she will discuss with us the new EU strategy on technology infrastructures. So just before we start, I would like to invite you all to turn on your cameras, grab your cup of coffee and smile for the picture. All right. Uh, now one, two, three. Thank you. So now Muriel, I give you the screen. Hello, I will share and you will guys let me know if that's enough. I will uh, try to keep it like this. See if I put full screen, I can see you guys. Yes, I can. So if I see some of you, have questions, then please uh, stop me. I will put it bigger so I can see more of you in the same time I present. Okay. Uh, maybe as if you have some of your videos, do you all know EARTO or do I start with the basics? That's the question. <laughs> so raise your hand if you know. Okay, those who don't have video, it's nice if I if I see you guys still. Okay, cool. Then I will uh, I will shortcut a little bit on on the uh, on the EARTO side. As you know, we have the uh, applied research uh, um, network, um, and I think uh, what we discussing today is one side of. Uh, uh, capabilities that my members are, uh, and we are going to discuss tech infra, but of course, uh, an RTO job is larger than that. But we have been discussing and promoting with the European Commission uh, the setting up of a new uh, um, strategy on infrastructure, because we think it's uh, one part of the job we do, and also in collaboration with others like technical universities or living labs. Uh, and we also have research infrastructure, but we thought the techno part was not uh, and is not yet well covered, or is covered, but in very different places, so not with an overarching um, strategy. So to explain to you what we did, um, a little bit of background, we have now uh, in the new uh, AI communication, and we worked hard for that, um, a new action, which is linked to uh, S3, of course, but to have its own uh, setup, could be under S3, uh, could be in a different work program, could be in the same work program, we don't know that yet. Um, a new governance also for uh, technology infrastructure. And I think this is where we are now. Uh, what was very good is that the Council also took on this action um, as one of their priority in the Council conclusion uh, after uh, the ERA communication publication. So we know that something has to be done. Um, what we did is that to reach uh, to the fact that the era communication and the custom conclusion, so the member states were going to look at technology infrastructure, we first worked with uh, DG RTD in uh, developing their own view on tech infra. So we had a workshop uh, where you had technical universities, RTOs, and industry together discussing technology infrastructure. And what came up was this uh, um, European Commission uh, working document who sets the views on uh, what the commissions understand as tech infra, uh, where do we go, what is needed. So this led to the communication. What we did once the communication was out is uh, now it has to be described into different type of actions, right? So. Um, we published last uh, uh, July a new position paper saying, okay, if you're going to set up a new strategy on tech infra, um, these are the type of advice uh, we would like to give you. Um, and here we have a few actions which, uh, which we kind of described. First was, okay, what type of, uh, of priorities uh, should you set up? 
um, the type of issues on funding, so the sustainability long term of those uh, of those infra, and of course uh, the pan European access to infras which are not all located uh, in the same member states. Sometimes they need to be networked uh, between the infra themselves. So at what you're doing now uh, in Madrid, of uh, the other possibility is that some member states don't have them at all and need to have their industry access those. So you can see it from two sides of the same coin. What we did at the time in, after July is uh, once the European Commission set up now a new uh, inter-service uh, or inter-DGs uh, expert group. So it's not open to external uh, participants. It's only between the Commission DGs. You have DG uh, RTD and I believe DG Grow, which are chairing, co-chairing that uh, expert group. And they have invited other DG like DG Comp, uh, DG uh, Connect, uh, and DG Radio. And they came up together because you have the state of rules revision of uh, the RDI framework, which is open until today. So we're going to actually submit a paper to that one. Um, setting in state aid a definition of technology infrastructure next to the de current definition of research infrastructure. So we provided them with uh, input. Uh, we did that. They partly took on board. Uh, we have some changes to make, but I think at least it's good to have one definition of technology infrastructure. What we also um, uh, pass on was different examples. Uh, of the technology infrastructure. So this is some of them, we, we have thousands. Um, and what we try to explain is that our members, they also have as much as they have research infrastructure, they have the tech infra. Uh, Sometimes it's located in the same environment. Uh, it's managed by the same RTO or could be by your technical universities. So that actually we are complementing each other and often um, doing different type of jobs. So we try to kind of show the variation between the two and especially the complementarity on the policy level of the two. Um, what we also tried to explain was sometimes you can have physical infrastructure, but we also have virtual infrastructure, especially when you are starting and discussing networking of infrastructure. We have example for um, robotics, which has been done, set up by DG Connect, for example, where you have um, uh, different technology infra by different RTOs connected together. Uh, and when one SME come to the one platform, the RTOs together are giving an offer, which can be based on different uh, facilities uh, to the SME who is interested to work for them to improve their robotics. Um, so we see that there is a quite complex dimension to, uh, to the tech, uh, tech infra world. Uh, what we try to explain as well, and I think that's what we see back in uh, the state and rules and why they came up with a technology infrastructure definition in the new uh, RDI framework, is that you have uh, technology infrastructure are covering a market failure, which means that the industry itself cannot pay for those infra, they are too expensive. Uh, I give you an example um, I make here in Flanders, close to me because I'm sitting now uh, in the area of Brussels. Um, IMEC has a value of technology infrastructure on microelectronics, which is worth 2 billion euro. There's no one single company that will afford uh, spending so much money just on the tech infra, not even on the research that is performed within the tech infra. So what you see is that you need certain type of investments pool, which are made together. Uh, uh, to be able to, uh, to claim some of type of uh, research and tech development between the TRL, let's say two to six. And that's where the technology infrastructure are coming in. Um, what we also try to express was that uh, technology infrastructure is like research infra. You, you have cycle of investments and at a certain moment you need upgrading uh, and you need some new investments to keep up with uh, the latest development in science. Uh, and to do that, then you need to have plans of investments. And what we see often when we are discussing, for example, regional funds, is that you have the funds for the mortar to set it up, but not the continuation. And even if those uh, infrastructure um, are sponsored partly by the industry in their use, they never pay the full price. Uh, so um, 
Here, the question is, how do you plan those type of investments long term? Uh, we had many discussions, for example, in the recovery um, and resilience facility, the RRF, to try to see in their RDI plans from the ministries on the recovery plan, what was planned for investment in research and technology infrastructure. So you had, for example, in the side of DG Connect, uh, the request with uh, the member states who had to spend at least 20% of their investment on digitalization to have clear investments on tech infra by RTOs on uh, 5G and uh, cloud and other things like that. Um, we tried to show that discussing technology infrastructure was very different than discussing research infrastructure. You needed to really link that to the industrial policy. And you have now um, the ERTO president who is part of the industrial forum of DG Grow. Uh, this is the forum who's going to discuss uh, what are the key investments that Europe and member states will make uh, uh, jointly on key industrial sectors. Uh, and here you have uh, the communication of uh, Breton Evestager who came out uh, in March, who explains what those sectors will be. Uh, they have a list of 14. They did quite some analysis what those economic sectors need as support. And there we're saying, okay, in terms of RDI investment for those industry, you will need to think of, do you have the technology infrastructure which are uh, necessary for future development? Uh, so the development of the strategy of tech infra cannot be uh, without a kind of a component of industrial uh, strategy. We did a small collection in our paper also on uh, current national program for technology infra. You see there is uh, many different examples. Um, and we see that uh, this could be taken as example also on how uh, Europe could look at things. Um, and what you see now is um, we had with the strategy a discussion on how to define technology infra. This is step one. If you don't define what you're looking at, you cannot uh, define a new program. And I think the next steps will be a second half of this year to try to look in terms of governance what's possible to be done. And what we uh, discussed with the different DGs which are working on, on this action is you have the GRIGIO, which is going to review the regional fund strategy by member states, especially the smart specialization strategies. You have the GRIGIO also have this new program under the European Innovation Council called Innovation Free, I3, which is the component five, which is going to pay connections of regions when they want to develop pilot lines and um, future tech infra. So you have example on 3D printing, from the Vanguard Initiative, for example. Those guys need to be linked to the exercise of this new uh, technology infrastructure. On the side of DG Grow, you have this industrial forum plus all the new European industrial alliances, which are going to launch very massive um, investments packages when they want to launch a new important project of common European uh, interest, the IP series. So you have one on microelectronics. You have a new alliance is coming on hydrogen, you have on AI, you will have on quantum, uh, and those big investments um, will be labeled as non-state aid by Digicomp if they use an EPCE. So what will go in these investments um, has to have a parallel uh, tech infra plan and research program. Uh, and it can be research infrastructure or tech infra that have to be linked to these EU industrial alliances, but they need to plan also what type of research program will be linked to those massive investments by industry. Um, and then you have DG Connect, which is probably the most advanced in speaking on technology infrastructure, who has already launched a very precise goal called the Testing and Experimenting Facilities, the TEFs. Uh, they have a call now on AI where they are asking uh, technology infrastructure owners, most of them are RTOs of technical university at this stage for AI, uh, to put themselves together uh, and look at what future investments are needed to be able to keep at the level of our competitor in China and in the US. Uh, and there the uh, commission will invest then for upgrading on uh, some of the AI infra. And that comes from DG Connect usual calls. Uh, so we're going to see and learn from them um, yeah, if it's working. <laughs> uh, and then you have the DG RTD, 
which is now uh, working quite carefully on uh, setting up also new uh, technology roadmap, but industrial technology roadmap. They are launching now a pilot. They are working on um, uh, energy intensive industry. Uh, they have looked at, for example, the cement industry and other type of industries. They have about three or four. And they are going to look at what are the technology needed to make those industry greener, uh, digitalization included. And in that environment, what are the technology developments which are needed to make step up? And there, there will be larger investments in those technologies which are deemed key. And in addition, they will look at what are the technology infrastructure uh, that we need to go step further. Do we have those in Europe? Do they need to be networked? Do they need to be upgraded to be able to speed up the processes of tech development? So you see that uh, you have many actions in parallel running uh, which will have to be linked into that strategy of tech infra. Uh, and we feel that it's necessary to have a kind of program on tech infra, but the way it is set up, we don't um, know if that's highly necessary to be a very, would say, more heavy uh, organization like ESFRI. Um, we feel that for technology infrastructure, the discussion should be a sector level. So what do you need for the future of automotive? Uh, what would you need for the cement industry? What would you need for, and then those sectors have to be picked um, because you cannot do all of them uh, in priorities with the industrial strategy. So that's where uh, we are quite active at the moment. And maybe the different calls which are being launched like the call of the G-Connect uh, TEFs, which is under the cluster ICT, would come under one work program. We don't know that yet. I think this is even more the details of the implementation than the strategic thinking we need at that moment. Or maybe it will be under uh, the Esprit uh, work program. You will have a new type of program called Tech Infra that will uh, use the cluster budgets for Tech Infra type of calls. So it can be in the clusters, can be a sub program of Esprit uh, next to the same work program could be done in many different ways. The most important is that it's being done at the moment. And I think that's where we are pushing quite hard for, for the discussion to, uh, to come up. So that's to give you in short where uh, this uh, strategy of tech infra comes, uh, comes up. Uh, the fact that it links to, uh, to research infrastructure, uh, that it is different type of infrastructure which are being targeted by that. Um, and we see some of the activities, some, started to be done under S3, uh, but we think that we need a more strategic thinking on, uh, on the type of, uh, of uh, infrastructure that we need for the future, especially on very large uh, industrial alliances where you have uh, mega investments from member states uh, into industry and that we need research program to go under those big investments. So that was in short, I don't know, I will stop sharing so I can see all of you and then you can shoot questions. Thank you very much, Muriel. This was really interesting. I'm curious to see if anyone in the audience has uh, questions. So please don't be shy. Don't hesitate. I see here, Michele or Michel, please. Uh, good morning, hi, uh, everybody. Could you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yes, you can. Because my video does not work. So sorry <laughs> to not uh, uh, appear on the screen. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I, I would like to ask the following question. What is the difference between the research infrastructure and the technology parks, which are nearby uh, big laboratories, uh, which uh, uh, already take advantage of the European Union program? I'm not sure I understood the, the, the wording. I, it, it cut at certain moment to compare the research infra and... Technology parks. Ah, technology I, park. Yeah, tech parks. In, in a tech park, you may have a tech infra or not. So tech parks are just uh, like science park. It's a piece of ground uh, saying where you're supposed to have uh, an ecosystem of actors. So um, tech parks are slightly different. Uh, which country are you coming from, Michelle? And maybe I can give you an example of what I mean by tech infra. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, uh, based in Athens, I'm speaking from Athens, and I'm, I'm uh, representing uh, Democritus in the uh, 
which is a large uh, research laboratory in Balkan area. And we host a technology park uh, uh, with uh, 50 incubators. And uh, yeah. the technology park take benefit of the infrastructure, technological infrastructure of the laboratories, which is cover a wide spectrum of uh, scientific activities. And at the same time, take advantage of all the European Union programs. So now, how you will define the monitors? Is it already a technological infrastructure or uh, uh, not? A tech infra? No, for me, a science park of a tech park is not a tech infra. It's some of the labs you may have in a tech uh, park of a science park. They may be research infra or they may be a tech infra. So, for example, if you're looking at uh, CEA in France, they will have a synchrotron, which is uh, S3 uh, labeled, which will be a research infrastructure. And next to their uh, synchrotron, they have a special labs to uh, test uh, and develop batteries for cars. So you will have a, a, a pilot line where you can test the materials for the batteries up to testing the battery uh, in the car. That's what I would call a tech infra. Well, the synchrotron, I will call it the research infra. Does that help? And they both can be on the tech part uh -huh. of the CEA in Grenoble in the DRT. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and those tech infra, they are partly used in European projects, but the use is paid by the European project only when they use it. So if you use five hours of the tech infra or the research infra, you will book that into your project. However, the European project don't pay investments in those tech infra. They have to be done otherwise. They only pay the use of it. Does that answer a little bit to your question? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, is there any other questions or comments? Yes, Paolo, the slides will be shared on the website. Mm -hmm. Anna. Hello, good morning. So I am, I'm Anna Hellman from uh, European Science Foundation and I am um, coordinating a project which is called Catrice Behind looking to, to map research infrastructure services. And I was wondering uh, if there have been any attempts to map these technology infrastructures in Europe. I've seen some data that come from the, from the commission, uh, but maybe if you could tell me a little bit more about uh, how, how much do we know, where are these infrastructures and, uh, and any- Basically, maps? there is so many. So they, they did uh, mapping uh, last program as other cats, so you had the CATS, um, who was that called? Not advisory club, but uh, they had one, one, pro one program between the materials and the G-Connect together where they tried to do a mapping. And what they realized is that such mapping are useless because there is so many. And you don't know who, you know, an SME who's trying to find a tech infra will ask, you know, the neighbor here, they were not going to look into a database of the commission to try to find, you know, the guys which are doing robotics, which are maybe five member states later. So it's not that very useful. Uh, what we saw that was more useful is when you are looking per type of sector and industry uh, or type of technology, like if somebody wants to do something on AI or you need something on robotics. Um, then that starts to be interesting to have a more precise mapping and they are really look into details. Ah, okay, so all the guys of robotics that we have in Europe are based in only five member states. The others are too low or it's not very uh, high tech. So that means we need to collect these five tech infra uh, to make sure that they have access and to make sure that people from other member states can access them because they know that they exist. I think one of the uh, main issue is not really the access. We know we are pretty open from the moment that you pay and you make a contract with us. For the RTO is a very standard way of working. It's not like for research infrastructure, which is more complicated. Um, we have a very good knowledge of our IP and how to deal with that. So only you don't have the same reach. You can be uh, based in Athens and you do Athens and Greece if you're good and not even the whole Greece probably. 
and it's the same for many other environments. So that's one. The access by SME is one of the issues. The other issue is that now for certain technology, the investments are getting too big. I gave you the example of I make clean rooms, which are worth now 2 billion euro investments. If you want to go to the next chip on microelectronic and to smaller sizes, you will need another billion maybe. <laughs> Who's going to pay for that? The industry is not going to pay for that, but the Chinese are building competitor and the US as well. So here you have the discussion of uh, the future big investments. So you have twofold, um, the access, the SME access, and the very large investments which are needed also on tech development for the future. Thank you, thank you very much. Any more questions? I actually might have a, uh, yeah, Jose. Hi, thank you. Um, so thank you for the presentation. It's uh, it's a subject I've had in the back of my mind for a while now because I haven't heard about it in a in a while, and I'm I'm genuinely curious about it because also there's a disconnection between what we call research infrastructures and what we call tech infrastructures. Uh, it's not clear to me that in all cases these have to be different entities. And I think if you look through um, the ESRI roadmap you have some, uh, some of the research infrastructures there that can work as both a technological infrastructure or a research infrastructure. Some of those, uh, and well, this is not on ESRI roadmap, but you mentioned IMEC, uh, and it's funded as a research infrastructure yeah. in, uh, yeah. in the work yeah. program uh, from Horizon 2020, yeah. and uh, we expect it to continue to be so in, in Horizon Europe. And, uh, so my question is, uh, what what you think would be uh, uh, more logical is that you create a, a group that is sort of like ESRI, but for technological infrastructures, and you create a different kind of roadmap for development. Uh, uh, would that en uh, entail a reorganization of ESRI itself? Because if you consider that something that is now considered an ESRI research infrastructure would uh, be better categorized as a, a technological infrastructure instead? Or is, is this more like uh, something where you would create different streams of revenue for the organizations uh, in that when they work as a, re a research infrastructure uh, serving the academia on lower TRL, TRLs, you would call it and fund it uh, as a research infrastructure and when the users would come from industry or use uh, um, objectives on, on development of higher TRLs, you would call it and fund it as a technological infrastructure. And so you could have uh, different components of it and the operation being fully covered from different streams according to usage. I think it's a, probably a mix of the two. I think at the moment you see that uh, uh, you guys have to face uh, some push in, uh, in S3 where you see more tech topic coming in. I think some of the S3 members may be more worried than others. Uh, and I think what you see is that at the end, the tech infra part is not really well looked at and it's very small in the whole S3 environment. So that it is a transfer to another program that looks in a, in a bigger way and probably better and, uh, and let the S3 roadmap as it works well for the more research part function. I think I don't have preference on this one. I must say, I think it's more to those who are active in to, uh, to give us a hint. I think that's what the discussion needs to be done for the governance of the TE. And I think in the same time, I would see it more as, a, as, a, as an additional program and where maybe you redefine better what you just do in S3 and what you don't, so you, you, you give a kind of line also. Uh, so you also protect S3 in a way, yeah? Uh, because it functions well, right? People are, I mean, you, you all have comments on any programs, but it functions. Uh, and that you really develop something for the day where for the day you need to discuss what the sectors, the industry needs are. And those are slightly different than from your research needs. Sometime, and that's where you need to kind of make a match. 
So um, I don't think we have the, the fixed answer to that. And I don't uh, know, I don't think that the commission will not know yet. And I think that's what needs to be discussed. And maybe you need to pilot um, very specific tech infra calls like the, like the testing and experimenting facility done by DigiConnect on AI to actually uh, evaluate what works. Huh? It's, a, it's a different environment. So in S3, even if you look at tech, it's still research uh, part, which is picked up of IMEC, not the tech and the high TRL level. So that's, uh, you know, with infrastructure, that's always the, the evaluation. You can have, you know, doing research and tech development uh, and uh, pre-development ones and certification on the same lab. And within the lab, you would have different parts used for different activities being research, tech and certification. So it's, it's not that clear cut that you have, you know, one part of the room, which is for this. And <laughs> or just single actor and, you know, research is more complex than this in general. If it would be so linear, we would be so happy. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's the question for the future. The questions you have, we, I don't have the answer yet, but I think those questions are coming. Thank you. We're running out of time. Uh, I don't know if maybe we can take one more question if anyone has. Yeah. No, I, I just like as a, to, to jump on this discussion, don't you think like if you somehow um, put these two uh, categories really separate and don't, don't build any bridge in between a research infrastructure and a technology infrastructure, like the, 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 that will create a big gap and then this, there will be no synergies and then investment might also disperse. I understand that investment might be needed differently in each of them. But at, 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 uh, I mean, th these are very specific uh, infrastructures as well. And I think synergies in between them, I mean, gathering forces together to create a bigger uh, impact. Uh, I, I feel like this is needed and there's a risk if you just like split them very specifically into, into distinct uh, boxes that might um, create, I mean, have less economical impact because research infrastructures might might also at some point deal with like technology development or innovation and uh, how do you do you see that i think that's another question than the financing i think on the financing is the question of how do you set up your program i think on the connection between uh the research infra and the tech infra yes i remember coming to s3 the working group on innovation of s3 maybe like seven years ago, making a presentation on the RTO model, yeah, of who are we funded, uh, that we have, you know, some part coming from the public uh, environment, that's generally one third of our basic finance. And then after everything coming to competitive call and fighting for contracts from the industry. And I remember the S3 guys being like, why we don't present this, it's not we're going to be asked to do the same. And that's where the, 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 the reactions are not um, are very defensive very often, and what you see is that all the actors, I think, have things to do. So you probably have to think in terms of uh, programming. Can you have program where you are asking actually the research infrastructure, which are not in an environment which also do the RTO part, which I think some do, some don't, uh, to kind of connect. So rather than to say to the very, uh, let's say, pure research infra, we stand alone and don't have tech infra next to them, to a kind of, you know, make some connection to the technology infrastructure. Uh, sometimes it's the same organization, so that's done internally. Uh, many often than more than more, it's not. So maybe you can have part of your program looking at this. You know, so I think this is where the governance now is quite open for discussion and what is necessary. And I think that very often we are discussing, it's a little bit the same that we have for universities. We are discussing university industry relation, like there is nothing and nobody in between. <laughs> and you have a whole world of Frauen offers and say, I have heard most of these words, which are doing the connection, you know. So um, here is the same. You can very much uh, improve the connections between uh, the S3 type 
and the future techie, techie type of program by having some programs pushing the connection rather than to pushing esprit towards innovation. Not thinking that you have a whole tier scale with the value of death to go up for the technology development. And probably it puts less pressure uh, on the esprit environment and, and, and redirect. And I think sometimes we're asking science to jump uh, where you need uh, translators, and that's what my members are doing in the meantime. And we don't use the connections between the two enough. So probably you could even uh, have strengths of, um, of further alignments between these two and connections and networking and the type of activities you have for your sector now with uh, Enrich. I'm sure this is uh, things that will have to be thought of. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, uh, Arnaud, do you want to raise your question and then we can maybe close the session? I mean, I still have like few min uh, 10 minutes if uh, people want to keep talking. But, maybe, um, maybe, maybe it's a kind of same question as before, but I think that maybe we could have one day an infrastructure which is both for technical and research goals. Yes. So and I don't know if... Is. Yes, okay. of course they are. Look at IMEC, look at many of the facilities of my members, they do. Uh, in Greece, we had uh, uh, Kemea, many, many, and many of my members don't do only techno, they do research development, very often also with um, other labs, uh, more uh, basic science labs or the universities, and they pick that type of research together and they, the RTO goes up the TRL ladder. So of course they exist, that's why it's not such a black and white, system, and I say it's not that linear, it would be very uh, easy if that was, uh, I don't think it is, and I think now uh, you need to look at different angles of those infrastructure, and I think the techno angle has been left out. In fact, my question is, may, may we have one day a technical infrastructure which is a complementary to a very research infrastructure? Uh, Yes, yes, and you have those, you, you already have those, you have examples of those existing already. Okay. And I think what you see is that for the technology infrastructure, you need different skills. You need different management skills and operation skills. You need to have a completely different way of operating. You have labs which are connected to industry. Some of these industry want services, uh, you know, 24, 24, seven days a week. Uh, they have IP, they have confidentialities, uh, they don't write papers, they don't want you to write papers on the research you do for them. Uh, so you won't be able to be judged on those type of old KPIs, more scientific ones. Uh, so you're talking about a completely different environment. And for that, you need to have special skills and you need to realize you need special investments too, to be able to keep those skills updated. So we have them in Europe. We have many RTOs and we have many good TUs. Uh, but you need to think in different area. What do you still need and where do you want to go further? Thank you. Okay, maybe we stop here and invite you everyone uh, to the, our uh, private uh, LinkedIn group where we can continue our uh, discussion. Thanks, Chiara, for putting in the link in the chat. Uh, there were some questions or comments uh, from the chat that maybe we can uh, put uh, directly in the, in the group so you can, uh, you can continue there. Thank you very much. Uh, that was very interesting. Just for information, next week we have our second webinar. Uh, of uh, enrich your knowledge and uh, we will discuss the basics of physical brokerage events for first time organizers and then we meet you again for our um, seventh episode of enrich your coffee on the 17th and this will be with ed mitchell from esrf and magnus larson from max4 to discuss technology root access and i'm sure it's going to be another in very interesting topic until then, I wish you a very good day and uh, looking forward to meeting, seeing you all again soon. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.